What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we'll be looking at working with models in the fashion industry. Finding the right professionals to help you model your clothing is an essential part of marketing and showcasing the brand that you have worked so hard to build. Especially if this is the first time you've worked with models, this step may be an intimidating part of any product development and product marketing process. So on today's episode, we'll be looking at the different types of models that you can actually consider hiring and outlining the characteristics of each. Each type of model is going to have a specific use case scenario and depending on the nature of your brand and the type of products that you're selling, one may be right for you, whereas the others may be the wrong choice for you. So that's hopefully what we'll be outlining in today's episode. And by the end of it, you should walk away with much more confidence in terms of how to approach this topic and ultimately hire the right type of professional for your brand. What's up design family and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports, fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. When it comes to the different types of actual fashion models that you can consider hiring, we'll start off with the type that you may be most familiar with. And this is going to be the runway model. A runway model is characterized by the type of professional that displays clothes on the runway, hence the name. And typically these professionals will travel from city to city to display their clothing in fashion shows. Whether it's Milan Fashion Week or Paris Fashion Week, these types of fashion shows are an essential part of the runway model's actual career and where they display their clothing and where you can actually find these types of models. The standard height of a female runway model ranges between five foot eight and five foot 11, whereas the standard height of a male runway model will typically range between five foot 11 and six foot two. Also, one of the most important characteristics and traits of a runway model is being able to walk the catwalk with full confidence when it comes to displaying the clothes. The last thing you wanna see is a professional who looks awkward in your clothing and is unable to exude the confidence and style required to showcase the beauty of your designs. The second type of model that we'll be considering in today's episode is the editorial fashion model. These are the types of models that are photographed specifically for fashion publications. If you think of something like Elle magazine or even Vogue, these types of models will require outstanding facial features and they should have the ability to pose extraordinarily well in front of a camera and to be confident doing this for a prolonged period of time. The third type of model that we'll be discussing today is that of the fit model. These models work as live mannequins. They require essentially similar body measurements to a brand's target customer. So for example, if you're an athletic wear brand, there's no point in bringing an extremely skinny or even an oversized fit model because that won't match your target customer. These types of models help to give designers and pattern makers essential feedback on the fitting, movement, feel, and drape of a garment. It's also ideal for these types of fit models to have some basic knowledge in garments and how they're structured. That way they can help to give suggestions on how to improve the actual fit and feel of the garment. Next up, we have plus size models. Plus size models will essentially need the same skills as editorial fashion models, except here they have larger body measurements. These types of models will typically allow a brand to be more inclusive and to lead or to reach a larger target market. Moving on, we have what is known as part models. These are models who are employed for a specific part of their bodies. These can be things like hands, legs, or even lips. Something like hands can be for modeling a watch and something like lips can be for modeling cosmetics like lipstick. Moving on, we have glamor models. These are the types of models that are going to be focused on sexuality and provocation. These models may be limited to men's magazines or for modeling for brands that offer lingerie or even swimwear. 
These types of models, so lingerie, swimmer, or provocative models are often more expensive to hire than other types of models, typically because of the stigma associated with it. Last but not least on the list, we have alternative models. These are models that operate in a niche market that typically doesn't conform to mainstream ideologies. For example, this can be a model with a punk aesthetic and multiple piercings, tattoos, or even a shaved head. Typically, alternative models are going to have a strong personality and unique or unusual features. Well, that is a wrap, guys. Hopefully, by now, you should have a much better understanding of the different types of models that are available to you and the characteristics that will make each of these models the right or the wrong choice for you. I hope you guys are able to choose well, and now that you have this knowledge, use it to showcase your brand in the best possible light. If you guys enjoyed this episode and learned a thing or two, please consider smashing a massive thumbs up. It really does help us out. Also, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. We put out great content on a week to week basis, and it would mean the absolute world to us for you to join us along for the ride. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.